Hillbrook Insane Asylum Patient File Update. Entry by Dr. Quinton Quartermain. I should stress it really is me this time. Normal service has been reinstated. Liarbird, the man who had been impersonating our late orderly Barry for the last five months, was successfully apprehended thanks to our... new friend. The Vigilante, known only as Lightmare. Thanks to her, he was put a stop to, and we managed to get this mess alive. All of us. <laughs> I've since recovered from my encounter with Liarbird, and by encounter with, I mean being shot by, and I'm ready to return to work, which is good, because it's time for the annual patient review, where we look back across all the patients we've already covered, and see what little bloody difference we've made. I honestly wouldn't bother, but Dr. Wickman is, for some reason, really insistent we do these, so there we go. First up is patient number 712, Axel Breitling, aka Piston Head. During my last visit with the patient, I saw significant improvement in his behaviour. He was more coherent and at the very least was able to string two sentences together without it always being about his imaginary car. Unfortunately, it seems we've recently experienced a bit of a setback. For reasons known only to the clinically insane, patient number 712 was recruited for Hillbrook the Musical. Which is a thing that exists. Apparently, there was a scene where Mr. Brightling, playing himself, was driving a cardboard recreation of his beloved Vanessa. And surprise, surprise, giving him a physical version of the object of his obsessive delusions caused some issues. When it came to taking down the set, he refused to leave, clinging to the cardboard car. Luckily, patient number 712 has the physical strength of a toothpick, so it wasn't hard for the orderlies to pull him off of it. I, however, would have probably waited until he was out of the room before dismantling it. You know, instead of effectively recreating the traumatic event that put him in here in the first place right in front of his eyes. He didn't react well, is what I'm saying, and has begun relapsing into old behaviour. Hard. He won't leave the cell, his garage, for anything now. Not even to eat. Says he's too busy repairing Vanessa. We may have to put him on the IV drips if this keeps up. Next is patient number 888, Cleo Lawson. Or rather, Cleopatra. Once again, nothing has changed. The Cleopatra persona is still holding strong, and she firmly maintains that Cleo Lawson is dead. In fact, last time I mentioned Miss Lawson to her, she actually said I was insulting her memory at this point, that I needed to move on as she had done. I think I'm fine where I am right now, thank you. There is, however, one new development that we should probably look into. Recently, a series of Symbols have been discovered, carved into several walls throughout the asylum. They appear to resemble some sort of ancient Egyptian text. No idea what they say. I did confront patient number 888 about them, seeing as how she does indeed know how to read and write ancient Egyptian, making her the likely culprit, but she just passed them off as random gibberish, not worth her time. Also, something is going on with her cult. The new Egyptians, what's left of them, have been something of a constant in the news. Never made the front page, but always got a mention somewhere. Mostly small disturbances, public demonstrations, occasional acts of violence. Oh, and that one time they broke into the Natural History Museum to, and I quote, reclaim their lost property. But recently, they've gone dark. No one's heard so much as a peep out of them for months now. Even their nutters who preach on the sidewalk have up and vanished. Further investigation is required here. Now though, onto a much more positive case. Patient number 935, Amber, otherwise known as The Giant. Though referring to her as a patient is quite inaccurate seeing as how, well, 
she isn't one anymore. She's cured. In fact, she's left the asylum altogether. As you may remember, after helping her through her issues, we were left with the problem of where to send her. I mean, what do you do with someone who is basically a child inside a 10 foot tall, super strong adult body? Well, I guess you could say the solution just walked in through the door. His name was Solomon McLeod, and he was looking to employ Amber. Said he was going to be fostering several kids and needed someone to help out around the house. Do simple jobs, you know, like cleaning, cooking, basic childcare, that sort of thing. She'd be provided with a place to live, as well as get some proper work experience at last. And she always was good with children. It all sounded just about perfect. She aced the job interview, and before we knew it, she was a free woman. And as long as nothing goes wrong with her parole, she'll stay that way. Good luck out there, Amber. We wish you all the best. Hmm. From my greatest success now, to one of my biggest failures. Patient number 200, Philip DeWitt, aka Ghost Writer. Though I must say, his nickname's starting to lose much of its relevancy given the massive public splash he's made recently. Yes, somehow, someway, number 200 managed to get full approval and funding for Hillbrook the Musical. His apotheosis, as he put it. By God, is he proud of it. I literally couldn't get a single word in during our interview. He wouldn't stop yammering on about how he's forever changed the face of theatre. And I can certainly see where he's coming from, looking at some of these reviews. Critics have this to say about Hillbrook the Musical. <clears throat> there is now a new standard by which to judge bad musicals. It's unlikely to win over those of us blessed with the gift of sight. Confirms every complaint Governor Fitzroy has ever made. The actors didn't so much as dance as they did flail about trying to kill each other. I genuinely feared for my life while watching this. I'm debating whether it would be healthier to keep these reviews from number 200, or just be honest with him. All this attention may be boosting his self-confidence, but the man was hardly unsure of himself to begin with. His ego is running rampant, and he is still yet to show any remorse or regret for his actions. DeWitt believes he was perfectly justified in killing Kurt Addington, and would not hesitate to kill again should someone get in the way of his art. Hmm. Upon further contemplation, I think I will show him the reviews. Could hardly make him any worse, let's face it. Finally, we come to our latest resident, patient number 921. Liarbird. No other known alias. Yes, despite him very nearly destroying this entire asylum and killing everyone in it, Liarbird is being held right here at Hillbrook. Granted, he is insane and probably does need psychiatric help. I'm just saying, does he have to get it here? Feels like I'm out of my depth with him anyway. His psychosis is like nothing I've ever encountered before. Interviewing him is nearly impossible. Both me and Dr. Pistol have tried and failed to get much out of him. One of our guards, Rick Taylor, is going to have a go of him next. Good luck to him. Liarbird analyzes you more than you analyze him, constantly digging for details and information about your identity with an inhuman level of focus. And his constant habit of speaking in other people's voices is unnerving, to say the least. His uncooperative nature is hardly the only problem, however. Initial tests show that the meds have no effect on him. Like, at all. I've never seen resistance like it. And I don't just mean the psychotropic drugs, I mean the sedatives, the intramuscular meds, the tranquilizers, the chloroform. Nothing works. Either he's undergone some form of special gene therapy, his metabolic rate has somehow been artificially raised, or something in his own biology is making him immune. It's anyone's guess at this point. 
They still haven't dug up anything on his true identity, nor the organisation that previously employed him. I've got no straight answers with this guy, and to be honest, I'm not expecting to get them anytime soon. Well, that's all of them. For now, at least. I best go prepare for my next session. Patient number 345 gets restless if I'm late. End recording.